Good to be with you. I'm excited for this team to go. And uh, it's one of those places like, oh, man, I want to go there. I want to see what God is doing there. I want to I be a part of that. And we get to be a part of that. So that is exciting. And I'm going to tell you, uh, we wanted to start with the commissioning of this team. And I'm going to tell you where we're ending this morning. We're ending by celebrating communion together, celebrating that Jesus came for us. He lived sent. He lived sent. And so we get to be uh, joining Jesus in his mission. Uh, let's do this together this morning. Uh, we've got the heat turned on for you. We're ready. Uh, let's go ahead. And uh, if you have a Bible, would you take that out? Let's be in God's word. If you need a Bible, would you raise your hand? One of our ushers will give you a Bible. In fact, oh, I just noticed this week that uh, we have given out almost all of our Bibles. And so I think we have three in the building. So if you get one, yes. Uh, we have more on order, and I thought, what a great problem to have. Uh, we're going to be in the second half of your Bible. We're Bible people here at Harvest. We're going to be in the letter of First John, and it's almost to the end of your Bible, almost there, First John chapter 2. It's a letter written by John the disciple, and uh, we get to go there. And I'm going to tell you the, uh, the title of the message is Authenticity Required, and you might be somebody who uses the app, and you can go there and find it on Sunday and notes and uh, all the things that will be on the screen are there for you. But I want to I'm going to tell you something that happened to me this last week as we begin. And this past week, Christy, my wife and I uh, needed to get new passports. Uh, our old passport uh, had expired, and we learned from the Chile team where to get them uh, easily because sometimes you know that like if you go here, it's hard. If you go here, it's much easier. And uh, so we heard that you could go to the county courthouse in Ellensburg for a much easier process. And we're like, we're all for that. In fact, we had already had to cancel twice on our scheduled appointments here in Yakima. So we said, let's just drive up there. You don't have to schedule. And uh, we'll go there. So we filled out our paperwork. We brought our expired passport with us, our driver's license. That's what it said on the form. Everything we thought we needed. And we got there and we walked in. And maybe you've had this. You walk up to the counter and like, can we help you? Yes, we're here for passports. And immediately uh, the customer service rep, uh, I'm just going to call him that, uh, said, do you have your certified, I think that's Ray's seal, birth certificate with you? No. No, we don't have that with us. Well, you have to have that with you. And basically he was like, sorry, you're out of luck. And uh, I'm going to tell you, uh, it was an awkward moment. It was, it was not a great moment for us. And it was where Christy and I looked at each other. It was like a scene from The Office where it was just expressions that carry the day, like, you know? And uh, we, were, we were in a moment of desperation. And so uh, we said, are you sure? Are you sure? Because we read the documentation that told us, bring your expired passport, and that counts. You don't need your birth certificate if you have this and your driver's license, and you can prove who you are. That, 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 are you sure? And he was like, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> and so he turned uh, to his coworker for verification. The coworker confidently said, uh, no, they don't, need their, uh, they don't need their birth certificate. You've had that, haven't you? <laughs> Like, we're with him. We're with him. We like that guy. We like him. And he said, no, as long as you have an expired passport and driver's license, you're good. And so you don't need that birth certificate. And we're like, whoo, I'm going to tell you, in just the space of a few moments, we were on the roller coaster of emotions. We had confidence, like we got it together. We're here. Uh, we had shock, like, what? We had questioning, like, we are dumb. Are we dumb? And then there was despair. And then there was hope. And then there was joy, and we ended with disappointment. Oh. Uh, no, hold, hold on. You say, why disappointment? Yeah, because the passport photo never gets you just the way you want. <laughs> just the way you want, you know? In fact, uh, would you like to see my passport photo? Would you like to see that? Go ahead and put that up there. But here it is. <laughs> I, I should have showered. Because I... I look more like an angry Antonio Banderas. <laughs> Actually, that is an angry Antonio Banderas, but we get mistaken a lot. Um, <laughs> I just had to work that in there somehow today. I was like, where could this fit in the message? Where could this fit? Uh, let me just, uh, let, <laughs> like, I just love that. If nobody else loved that, I love that, all right? 
This is why it's important uh, what we're talking about today. Why, why are we talking about passports? Why are we talking about these things? And uh, listen, when you're applying for a passport or a document like it, you need supporting materials like a driver's license or birth certificate because the whole process is about authenticating. Authenticating. No substitutes. Authentic only. That's, that's what we have to have. Because we need to know that you are who you say you are. We need to know that you are who you say you are. That's important at the passport office. That's important here at church. That's important as we are the church in this world. Because there's the authentic you, and then there's what the rest of the world does. The rest of the world creates falsehood, imposters, counterfeits. And when somebody impersonates you, when somebody impersonates you and takes your credit card number or, or gets your bank account number or your home title lease or something like that, we call that fraud. That's fraud. And when somebody impersonates a Christian, the Bible has a couple of words for that. And you're going to see today, one of the words that we would say for somebody impersonating a Christian, that person is a wolf. That is a person is a wolf. But there's a better term, a more accurate term that our passage will say today, and it is antichrist. Somebody who is a fraud, somebody who is not legitimate, somebody who is an imposter, somebody who is not truly a Christian, somebody who puts on the face of being a Christian but is not and leads others away from Jesus is known as an antichrist. And here's the truth. Our world, our world needs authentic Christians. Our world needs authentic Christians who are following the authentic Savior. And our world needs this today. Amen? It needs this. We need this. So if you have your Bible open, I want you to see this passage. It's a loaded passage, and it's going to take us right into communion. Right into communion where we're headed to see the authentic Jesus and what he did for us. 1 John chapter 2, verses 18 through 23. That's what we're going to read today. And so let's just dive in. Here's what it says. Children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, so now many Antichrists have come. Therefore, we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us, but they went out, that it might become plain that they all are not of us. But you, you have been anointed by the Holy One, and you have all have knowledge. I write to you, now that's always important when he says, here's why I'm writing to you. I write to you not because you do not know the truth, but because you know it. And because no lie is of the truth, who is the liar? He who denies that Jesus is the Christ, this is the Antichrist. He who denies the Father and the Son, no one who denies the Son has the Father. He's into it now. Whoever confesses the Son has the Father also. Verse 24. Wait, let's just stop right there. Because we can only handle so much at a time. But let's recognize what we're, what we're going to wrestle with, what we're going to understand together, where we're going today. This is not just a letter from John to some people. This is the Word of God for us. Amen? Amen. And as we understand the Word of God, it, we are to respond to the Word of God, and we are to be authentic Christians, following the authentic Savior in the real world. That's what we are meant to do. Now, I want you to notice something about this section, that it starts with a statement regarding time regarding timing. I wrote in the margin of my Bible here, this is what I wrote. Know when you live. Know when you live. John, the writer here, he is stating that it is the last hour. The last hour. This is another statement that is synonymous known as the last days. And some people begin to like, what does that mean? What does that mean? Here's what it means. The last hour, the last days began with the coming of Jesus when God the son took on flesh, was born. We celebrate that as he came into a world. That first word on the t-shirt for our team, incarnate, incarnate, 
Jesus with flesh, God with flesh, incarnate, in person. When he came, we celebrate that every Christmas. We love that. That began the last days. The last days concludes. The last hour concludes at the return of Jesus when he comes to rule and reign, and we look forward to that day. We all live in the last days. In fact, the last days have been going on now for 2,000 years. The last hour has lasted 2,000 years. We are in that time period. John is just saying, you need to know this. And then he said, also, I want to introduce to you a term that you need to know. John is the only one who uses this term, antichrist, antichrist. He's the one who introduces it, and he's the one who explains it to us. In fact, I want to give you a definition for antichrist today. Here it is, antichrist from the Greek, antichristos, against Christ, or some would say instead of Christ, against Christ or in place of instead of Christ, a false Christ. In fact, I think about that. This is that word that is used. John is saying, let me, let me explain it. Let me help you understand it. He is telling us, and it sounds like the church knows this, there is coming, there is coming yet to come, an imposter, a counterfeit, not authentic, that claims he is the Savior. He's saying, not Jesus, me. Not Jesus, me. And he will lead people away from the truth about Jesus. He will lead people to worship him. He will want to dominate and rule this world. This sinister demon-inspired leader will rise to power in the end time, persecute Christians, persecute the saints, seek to destroy the Jewish people from the face of the earth. We've seen some antichrists over time. And banish the name of God from the earth. That's what he wants. He wants that. He is in league with the evil one, Satan, tightly. But this is not where John wants to spend his time. He doesn't want to talk about the Antichrist. We'll call that the Antichrist with a capital A. But he said, I want you to know, and I want to warn you, Christians, that you right now are dealing with a lot of little A, little Antichrists. People who want to lead you away from Jesus. People who want to be in place of Jesus instead of Jesus. They're against Jesus. He says many little antichrists are in the world right now. And that, that helps us tie together where we were last week. See, we're just, we just go by verse by verse through the scriptures. And then we just say whatever the scriptures bring up, we deal with it. Last week we talked about don't love the world. And by the world we mean the organized system headed by Satan that leaves God out and his arrival to him. That's what, when it says, don't love the world, he says this, the world meaning the organized system headed by Satan that leaves God out. Who helps lead that system? Little and many antichrists. Little antichrists, many antichrists all over the world. And I want to give you just something that out of that definition of the world Please note that definition says the system is organized. The system is organized. Satan is the deceiver, the great deceiver, the father of lies, but he is not dumb. Some people have, uh, have this idea of Satan that he's just dumb. He's not dumb. Now, we don't, we don't celebrate him in any way. We're not, we didn't gather this morning to celebrate Satan, did we? We're not coming to communion to celebrate him. We're coming to celebrate the Savior but listen, you better know your enemy and your enemy is organized. Your enemy is highly organized and has a system in this world promoted and organized by demonic forces, rulers, and authorities. That's what the scripture calls it. He is very organized. He is on the move. He is mobilized. And he wants to kill and steal and destroy. That's what he does. He has people that are in league with him, that are deceived and are working to deceive others. Now, I want to I want to talk about this just for a moment. Little intentional sidetrack. Sometimes Christians can over spiritualize things. I don't know if you've been around Christians that over spiritualize things, but it's annoying. <laughs> All right, it just it, it's it's annoying. I hear Christians saying like this: If 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 it's of God, it'll just happen. If it's of God, it'll just happen. It'll just happen. Sometimes you say, well, they have a high view of God's sovereignty. That means that God is in control of all things. He's sovereign all, over all things. If it's of God, it'll just happen. And I would say this, <laughs> God is sovereign, but 
Don't absolve yourself of your responsibility to be listening, obeying, respond, responding to the Savior, mobilized for the kingdom. I love, I love that we are sending a team to the southern hemisphere. I love that. In fact, I want you to think about this. Let, let's say you want a job. You say, I want a job, I want this job, I want this job. It, well, I would say, do this. Pray and ask God to give you that job. Pray and ask God to give you that job. Pray if it's your will, God, I pray that you would give me this job. That's, I, I, I'd like that. And then go apply for it. Go apply for it. Well, if it's of God, he'll just give it to me. Jesus is not filling out your application. He did not fill out my application for a passport. He did not fill out the application for passports for this team that is going across the globe. He did not do that. If you, you say, hey, this is what I want. Pray, seek the Lord's face, prepare, get ready, and then move out. See, the world is a, an organized system headed by Satan, an organized system and it is organized to lead people away from God, we should not hand over organization to the evil one. Well, that he's organized, we're not. No, no. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus is a God of order. Jesus works every day against chaos. Jesus is the God who holds all things in his hand. Give him the credit. So we should pray, we should prepare, and then let's go for it. Let me tell you two ways we've seen that just recently here. I want to talk about Vacation Bible School for a second. We're going to celebrate our kids and our youth volunteers this afternoon with that picnic. I love it. Listen, rain or shine, we're doing it. Okay, we're going to, it's going to be fun. But I'm thinking about Vacation Bible School, which was fantastic. We just filled this place up with kids. And I'm going to tell you that was prayed for in advance. It was prepared for for months. And I, I'm just going to highlight this. The ladies who worked in the snack department didn't just show up and say, I hope there's snacks today. If God wants it, there'll be snacks. <laughs> God wants it, there'll be snacks. That is not how it worked. They showed up and they prepared and they helped kids and they got what they needed. And this is how we mobilized so we could talk about Jesus. We could talk about the good news that he loves kids. We love all of that thing, that, that VBS. Let me talk about that mission team again. They didn't decide last week, you know what we should do this summer? This has been going on for several months that they might fly to the Southern Hemisphere, encourage a church and youth ministry there. They have prayed, they have prepared, and now this Friday, it's time to go. It's time to go and serve. Because we can pray and prepare and do nothing. That's not what Jesus wanted. Live sent. Live sent. You say, well, where would he send me? He might send you across the street today. He might send you to work tomorrow and you live sent at your workplace. Say, what is this? I thought we were going to spend time talking about the Antichrist. Yes, we will. But first we want to extend a call to be God's people. To be God's people on God's mission in God's world. Let's pray. Let's prepare. Let's go for it. Amen? Amen. Let's be people who are saying we know the evil one is at work. But who is greater? Our God. Our God is greater. Now let's, let's jump back into it here. I want you to pay attention to a couple of things that you can know when it says watch out for the Antichrist, little a. Watch out for these. Pay attention. Be able to identify an Antichrist. That means a counterfeit Christian. Watch out for this. John is going to make it very clear by what John is an old man here. And no, he is not wasting any time. He's like, I've got stuff to talk about. Let's get after it. That's why he can call Christians of any age children because he's at least in his upper 80s at this point as he's writing this letter. Number one, he says this about Antichrist. Antichrists, you'll know them because they will depart from the faithful. They will separate from the faithful. They will, they will move away from people who know and love Jesus. They will depart from there. They were around us and then they left us. Now, we can see that out throughout history, we've seen this, we've seen this, we've seen this where people have been around the people of God and then depart from them to do their own thing and to have their own take on Jesus. Now, I'm going to tell you, uh, 
You say, well, show me an example in the Bible. I can give you a clear example in the New Testament of an antichrist during Jesus' own ministry. His name is Judas Iscariot. He was around Jesus. He was around the disciples. He served in ministry. He knew the scriptures, and he witnessed God's power at work in others' lives, yet he was never a part of the family of God. And ultimately, he worked against Christ, and he wanted to exclude Christ instead of Christ. You say, well, what was, what was his God? We find out that his God was money. His God was money. That, that's what he worshipped. Antichrist will depart from the faithful. Now, I'm going to give you a little sub point here that is important. They have to be with us in order to leave us. They have to be with us in order to leave us. And that's the scary part. That doesn't mean they're a part of us. They're not one with us, but they were with us. They were around us. You say, Jason, are you saying that people who leave our church are antichrist? Whoa. If you walk away from today's message with that, that is not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying people who move away from God's people to do their own thing and to have their own take on Jesus or heaven or hell or this is what happens. An antichrist will depart from the faithful. And I'm thinking about this. It, by the way, I'm going to take you back a couple of years into the pandemic. There was all kinds of chaos. Would you agree? There were all kinds of chaos. And if you read any of the research, there were lots of people who left the church across not only the nation but across the world. They have departed. That doesn't mean they're antichrist. But I'm going to tell you there were people that... that just have checked out since that time, and you say, what was their deal? What was their deal? Their deal was masked. Their deal was this. Their deal was that. And I, I'm going to just tell you, great job of just staying on track. See, what are you about? We are about leading people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what we're about. Let's not get sidetracked. Let's not get sidetracked. Let's not get off. Let, it was no fun. It was no fun. I'm going to even ask for an amen on that. It was no fun. Amen. Oh, well, okay. Well, <laughs> it was no fun. You're right. But I, I, I'm going to stop and just say just something about our live stream for a second. I'm looking at our cameras just for a moment. Uh, you should know this about our live stream. Right now, as a leadership, we're talking about, like, how do we handle our live stream? We worked really hard to make that accessible to people who want that. But this, listen, we are very, very, very convinced that the church is meant to gather. Amen. We're meant to gather. Amen. And so we're talking about what we might do with our live stream because you were not meant to stay in your jammies <laughs> and call that church. And you're like, man, are you talking to me? No, I'm talking about this. Listen, uh, we want to make sure if somebody cannot gather because of a barrier like an illness, an infirmity, or just distance, there might be something like that, we want to make sure that live stream is, is working hard and going out. We want that. But we also firmly believe that the church was meant to gather. And if you're able to gather, you should gather. That's all I'm going to say on that right now because we've got stuff to talk about. <laughs> Now listen, as you look at this, it says here in verse 19, if you go back to verse 19, it says, they went out from us, but they were not of us, for they, if they had been of us, they would have continued with us, but they went out, that it might become plain. I would have you underline that in your Bible, that it might become plain that they all are not of us. I love it when things are plain. Let me give you a couple things that are plain because this scripture is going to tell us how you can identify a Christian, an authentic Christian. Here's some signs of authenticity. Signs of authenticity. The first sign of authenticity for a Christian is that they are anointed by the Holy One. They have the Holy Spirit. You can't buy the Holy Spirit. You can't barter for the Holy Spirit. Only through a relationship with Jesus, the Son, that gives you the Father and the Holy Spirit given to you as well. If you have the Holy Spirit, you are a Christian. You are a Christian. You put your faith in Jesus. And he blesses you with this Holy Spirit. You're able to discern truth from error because you have the Holy Spirit. When you have the Holy Spirit, you're able to say, that's wrong, that's not right, that, that, I, I should not have anything to do with that, that's error. I don't wanna be a part of that. You're able to discern truth from error. 
And then I like this last one, you abide. The opposite of departing. You abide, you live in the truth and in relationship with Christ and his people. Christ and his people. You're like, man, I love everything about the church except the people. I have people that tell me that. I love everything about the church except the people. And and I have to say, you know what? It's because you can see all the deficiencies in them. And the hard part is they can also see the deficiencies in you. And that's why we need the Savior, not just for salvation, not just a one-time entrance into the family, but every day we need the Savior. That should get an amen. Amen? Amen. We need the Savior. Let me give you a second thing that identifies an antichrist then. The second thing about antichrist, it says here in verse 22, antichrist will deny the faith. They will deny the faith. Verse 22, who is the liar? Wow, that's strong language. That's strong language. Who is the liar? But he who denies that Jesus is the Christ. This is the antichrist. He who denies the Father and the Son. Look out. John is just going for it. I heard this statement this week, and you might uh, just hold on to it. What you believe, what you believe matters. What you believe matters. It matters, folks. Our, our modern world would tell you, the universalist church would tell you, the, uh, the united church would tell you that it doesn't matter what you believe as long as you believe something. I went and saw the new Indiana Jones this last week, and I knew this line was coming. And he said in that gravelly voice, which only Harrison Ford, the old guy, the, the Harrison Ford that said, I found this, it's not what you believe, but how hard you believe it. And I turned to my uh, family and I said, garbage. <laughs> it's a great film, had a lot of fun. Garbage. That, that, that line right there, what you believe matters. Many cults have been started by people who have heard the truth, heard the gospel, who have heard the truth about Jesus and have rejected it. Some who have been raised in the church, around the church, and have come up with their own take on Jesus and salvation. In John's day, he had a group that was like the, the leading group that was leading people, the, the number one, the primary group leading people away from Jesus. They were the Gnostics. The Gnostics, they were into this hidden knowledge, secret knowledge. Only, only the elite can have this good knowledge. And they were saying, you need to know the truth about Jesus. And here's what they were saying about Jesus. Jesus was a really good man. And that he was touched by the divine. He had the divine spark. He got the divine spark. The, uh, a little bit of divinity was given to him at his baptism. And then he, he lived that out until the cross. And then the divinity left him. And he was just a good man dying. And so that's it. That's what the Gnostics were putting out there about Jesus. And they were leading people away from the truth. John tells us that true Christianity is not Burger King faith. You're like, what? Burger King faith is this. Burger King for years ran a a slogan, and they they were really trying to pump it. And this was their slogan. Burger King's slogan was, have it your way. Have it your way. How is it that most of the Burger Kings I know have gone out of business? (laughs) Or when you go there, you're like, wow, has anybody cleaned? In the last little while, you might have a great Burger King that you know of. You might have that. But I've had enough bad experiences to know have it your way is not a great way. That's not the gospel. Have it your way. The truth is, and I want you just to hear the truth of the gospel. For God so, anybody? Loved the world. All that he created, his people made in his image. God so loved us that he sent his one and only son, God in the flesh, that whoever believes in him might have eternal life. You you can turn that around, life eternal. That's the beauty that we must live in, abide in, hold on to, never let go of, never try to improve on because you can't. Jesus came for us. Not because we deserve it. Rather, it was fully based on his love, his will, his decision. And when we embrace that truth, here's what he gives us. Forgiveness. Thank you, Jesus. He gives us the Father. He gives us the Son. He gives us the Holy Spirit. He gives us a home in heaven. Our future is secure. 
Now I want you to have just two more verses as we bring this together. Verse 26. I write these things to you, second time he said that today, about those who are trying to deceive you. Would you underline that in your Bible? That is another sign of an antichrist. Verse 27, but the anointing that you receive from him abides in you, and you have no need that anyone should teach you, but as his anointing teaches you about everything and is true and is no lie, just it has taught you, abide in him. He's saying this, you want to know the greatest teacher? <laughs> the Holy Spirit. I, I don't know if I can understand the Bible. If you have the Holy Spirit, you, he will help you. He will help you. Three things that you need to know how to identify an antichrist. The third one today is this antichrist try to deceive the faithful. And I would say this to any Christians who are th saying, I'm thinking about investigating, or I've got a friend who wants me to meet with them and talk about what they believe, and I would say don't bite on the hook. There are things that are said to trick you, twist the truth and the word, because as you hear this, trying to deceive you, that word deceive is actually, if you use another word in there that really captures it, seduce you, lure you in. Did you ever see the movie Chitty Chitty Bang Bang as a kid? There was a guy in there, the child catcher. I'm going to tell you, messed me up. Messed me up. And he would try to bring children in. Children and he would try to lure them in. That is false religion. That is, that is what an antichrist would do. And say, no, 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 you don't know, you don't have the greater truth, I'll expose you to the greater truth. He said, read your Bible. You have it, understand it. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. It's interesting to observe that many anti-Christian groups rarely tried to lead lost, sinners to false faith. Instead, they spend a lot of their time trying to convert professing Christian church members to their own doctrines. To their own doctrines. They're out to seduce the faithful. That is the prize. To lead somebody away from Jesus. As we think about this, you say, how do you know that's happening? I, I want you to hear this verse. It won't be on the screen for you out of 1 Timothy 4.1. It says, now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times, guess when we live? In latter times. In latter times, some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and the teachings of demons. Wow. That is happening in our world today. It's happening. You say, well, where are we going with this? What, what, are we, what are we to do with all of this truth about Antichrist and authenticity. What are we supposed to hang on to today? We, we are supposed to know the truth. We are to stick to the truth. We are to make sure we are clinging to the authentic Savior. Authentic Savior. You should know this about Jesus. He has all of his documentation in order. Have you ever seen those genealogies in Matthew and Luke? His documentation's in order. He's certifiably the only one who could save us. And he's the only one that we can accept as our substitute, taking our place. Today is a call for authenticity. And one of the things that retrains us and brings us back to the truth is communion. I'm going to invite Darren Thomas, who's one of our elders, to come and just lead us into a time of refocusing on the truth.